Okay, we want to talk about linear combinations of vectors. Very central idea. And a linear combination of vectors, very, very simple concept. A linear combination of uh, two or more vectors is just a sum of multiples of those vectors. So, for example, the linear combination of vector v1 equals 3, 1 and v2 equals 2, negative 3 is a sum of multiples of v1 and v2. In this case, let's look at the linear combination 2v1 plus 1 half v2. Okay, well, 2v1 is a multiple of v1, 1 half v2 is a multiple of v2, and when we add them we have a sum of multiples. Now we can represent the vectors. Okay, the vector v1 can be represented uh, by the vector whose x component is 3, whose y component is 1, so that would be about here, over 3 in the x direction, up 1 in the y direction. v2 by the vector 2, negative 3, come over 2 units in the x direction, and negative 3 units in the y direction. So there's vector v1, here's vector v2. Algebraically, very easy to do an algebraic calculation here. 2 v1 plus 1 half v2 equals 2 times the vector 3, 1 plus 1 half times the vector 2, negative 3 and that equals well 2 times 3, 1 to multiply just a number by a column we just multiply the number by everything in the column. To multiply a number by any matrix, and this column is just a 2 by 1 matrix, uh, we multiply that number by every entry in the matrix. Okay, so that's what we do. We do 2 times 3, 1, we get 6, 2. And then we do 1 half times 2, negative 3, and we get 1, negative 3 halves which could be written as a mixed number, negative one and a half, but we don't write mixed numbers much. Okay, um, I mean, obviously if we convert to decimal or mixed number notation if we want to graph something, but um, when we do the calculations we don't want to be messing with mixed numbers. And when we want to be exact we don't want to be messing with decimal approximations either. Okay, well, that aside, this should be pretty easy to understand. Okay, 2v1 plus 1 half v2 is 2 times this, 2 times this is 6, 2. And half v2, half of this is 1, negative 3 halves. And of course if we add those, we get 7, one half. Because 2 and negative 3 halves is 4 halves and negative 3 halves, which is 1 half. Okay, well, that's how we calculate it. We can represent it, and we can represent the calculation um, by simply doing 2v1 to this vector. Now, 2v1 means uh, we take a vector that's in the same direction, but twice as long. Okay, so 2v1 can be represented by a vector twice as long as v1 and in the same direction. 1 half v2, okay, well here's, here's 2v1. Now 1 half v2 is going to be a vector in the direction of v2, but only half as long. Well, half as long puts us about here, so we could represent that by a vector maybe here. So here is 
Mm, don't want to put my label there, I'm sorry. Got a smudge down here too, but I can't get rid of all of it. Okay. So here's one half V2. Now there are two ways to represent the sum of two vectors. It's very simple. Uh, we just lay the vectors out head to tail. So we take this vector and we move it over here. And this is still the vector. One half V2. But we haven't followed our usual representation where the vector is rooted at the origin. Also, I don't think I got the parallel very well, but you know, this should be out this way a little bit more, but I'm not going to change it. Okay? Uh, of course, now my sum vector would go from here to here. Okay? We think of a vector as something that, uh, well, there are two ways to think of it. Uh, we use vectors to represent points in Euclidean space. In that case, we have them rooted at the origin and their terminal point is at, at that point in space. Um, we can also use vectors to represent displacements. Okay, so this vector is a displacement that would take this point to this point. The same vector would take this point to this point where this arrow has the same length and direction as this one. Now, of course, the head-to-tail thing, uh, we could do this vector head-to-tail with this one, and we could do this, we'd end up at the same point. So we have 2v1 here. Either way, the sum of the two vectors is going to be represented by a vector from wherever we start to where we end. And I'm going to have to draw this vector right through my labeling of V1. But now this red vector is two V1 plus one half V2. Now, try to decide on colors here. Two V one is going to be twice as long as V one. V one goes from zero zero up to three one. So to get two V one, we could add a V one to V one. So we would go start here. We would go three units in this direction and one unit in this direction, we would end up at the point 6, 2. Then, one half of V2. Well, V2 goes over 2 and down 3, so that one half of V2 will go over 1 and down 1 and a half. Half of 3, and down 3 halves. If from 6, 2, we go over 1 and down 3 halves, where do we end up with? Well, over 1 will take us to 7, and down 3 halves of 1 and a half from 2 is going to take us to the point 7, 2. 7, 1 half, sorry. So this picture can be made to agree exactly with this calculation. If we do this accurately and carefully and measure out all the angles and directions and displacements, we're going to get exactly the same result by putting these vectors head to tail as we do if we do the calculation here. Okay, well, that calculation is one linear combination of the vectors V1 and V2. Now let's say that we have these vectors again. And I'm not going to draw them all that carefully, but here's V1, and here's V2.
let's say that we want to find a linear combination of these vectors that takes us to this point here. In other words, we want to find a linear combination of these vectors that gives us this vector. So the question is, call this vector v, and I want to be careful how I do this. Um, you know, I don't want my vector v to be there, because consciously or unconsciously. I simplified my picture by putting it there. And I'm not going to explain what I mean by that. I'm just going to draw it where I want it. Okay, so here's my vector v. So I want to find the linear combination linear combination of v1 and v2 that gives us v. Okay? Well, a vector in the direction of v2 uh, would have to go in this direction if we take this, uh, the, the idea of direction uh, literally. But of course, a linear combination is a sum of multiples. So we could have a negative multiple of v2. So first of all, clearly multiples of v2 lie on this line. That is, they would be vectors from the origin to points on this line from the origin along v2. Okay, so When I say they lie on this line, I really should say they represent points that lie on this line. They're arrows from the origin to points on this line. But I'm going to use this abbreviated notation. And that line extends back in this direction. Uh, I've got to get over here so I can make that line in approximately the right direction. Okay. So just to, well, okay. Negative multiples are here, positive multiples are here. Negative multiples are on this side of the origin. Positive multiples are here on this side of the origin. But any vector from the origin to a point on this line is going to be a multiple of v2. Now, what we want to do is we want to move out along the vector v1 until our direction from whatever point to the tip of v the tip of our target vector, our v vector, is in this direction. Okay, so if we move out to a point here, well that would be a multiple of v1. That might be about one-third of v1. The direction from here to here is not the direction of v2, so there's no multiple of v2 that's going to get us from this point to this point. If we go too far out along v1, then we've got to go back in this direction too far, and we're not going to have the right point on this vector v1 such that 
a multiple of V2 takes us to the tip of V1. What we want, and we can represent it as so, I've got to move over here to make this reasonably accurate. And looking at it from here, it's going to get distorted. Okay, this line is going to be parallel to this line. If I draw a vector from here to here, this vector is then a multiple of V2. It's a negative multiple of V2 because it's going this way where V2 goes this way, but this is a negative multiple of V2. And then, of course, this vector is a multiple of V1. Well, here we have a multiple of V1 and a multiple of V2 that add up to our vector V. I can even estimate what these multiples are. This multiple of V2 is this long, and V2 is this long. So this multiple looks like it might be about two-thirds of V2, and this vector looks like it well, actually might be about two-thirds of V1. Okay, so let's just say that by estimating, comparing the length of this vector to the length of V2, it's about two-thirds of the length and it's negative. Maybe negative two-thirds of V2, question mark there. And this multiple of V1, maybe two-thirds of V1. Okay, well, could that maybe be two-thirds of V1? Okay, so eyeballing it with a very rough sketch, we estimate that the linear combination of V1 and V2 that gives us the vector v might be negative two-thirds v2 plus two-thirds v1. Now, that's probably not a very accurate estimate because I didn't scale this graph and I didn't mark off points and so forth. We could actually check this out and probably will in a minute. The point now is that I could have done what I did here with any vector v. I take any point in the whole plane, I take a point up here and say, okay, uh, the direction of v2 from this point goes about like this, and if I follow v1 until it hits this line, it's going to be about, oh, maybe five times v1. And then to get to this point up here, it looks like we have to go maybe negative 2 or negative 3 times V2. The point is not so much to estimate as to see that wherever I go, if I want to go here, uh, I can take this point, I can draw a line parallel to V2, I can draw a line from the origin through V1, see where they intersect, and see how much V1 I need and how much V2 I need to get here. Okay, the main idea is I can get any point or any vector in the plane as a linear combination of V1 and V2. It's a sum of multiples 
of V1 and V2. So I'll make the statement over here. Any vector in R2, our two-dimensional space, is a linear combination, a sum of multiples of V1 and V2. I can estimate what those multiples are. If I want a vector from here to here, it looks like I come back here, I intersect with this, I need about one, two, three, four, five V1s, and I need about one, two, three V2s. So I think this vector is about five V1s plus three V2s. That'll get me here. Okay, anywhere, any point, and it should be clear that as long as these two vectors aren't parallel, I can do this. Well, we'll say a little bit more about this in the next video.